Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you my weekly 30 gallon water change here on the 300 gallon reef tank. And I've been uh, doing this consistently over the last six to eight months. And the tank has been, just been growing out of control and doing very, very well with this simple routine. Now, uh, if you guys are kind of wondering uh, if you've been here for a while, this tank has gone through so many different variations and so many overhauls, getting rid of fish and kind of getting rid of rock structures and just changing it up just because it is what six or seven years old at this point and i think this is the fourth overhaul i want to say something like that either way it's been about eight to ten months since we did our last overhaul and the corals are growing extremely quickly and uh, with that said before we get started if you are interested in any coral from this uh, system please check out my website fishofhex.com i do have a sale going on 30 percent off all coral for the month of may use the code cleanhouse 30 percent at checkout and uh, there's a ton of stuff. There's buy one, get one free, buy two, get one free. There's NEMS on there. There's there's a lot of stuff. And I'm just basically giving this stuff away at this point just because I have two low boy frag tanks. In hindsight, I almost wish that I still had my giant tub because I am just cutting a ton of coral and it's like I can't get rid of it fast enough. So uh, as you guys know, I always put on those 20 pack sales and all that kind of stuff. You guys know that I, I probably have the cheapest coral online, period, because I grow it here in the 300 and it just it grows out of control and I just got to get rid of it. So with that, if you want to support the channel, check out the, uh, the website fishofhex.com. Now, with that, uh, this routine is relatively simple. I, I do the exact same thing every single week. I come in here and I clean the glass first. First and foremost, just trying to get all that stuff up into the water column because we're gonna siphon out a lot of the water anyway, so or at least 30 gallons of it. And I just kind of go through and clean the front panels, both sides panels. I don't really clean the back panel uh, that often, probably once a year, maybe I'll get back there. But right now I have a pretty good covering of Coraline on the back panel, as well as the bottom, which you guys will see here in the video. So I'm not really messing with that. Everything seems to be growing pretty well, and I do like the purple look anyways. Okay, now that I'm done cleaning the glass, it's time to go ahead and remove the detritus from the bottom of the reef. Now, this is the bread and butter of having a bare bottom reef tank. Uh, you guys, I mean, I've made tons of videos on this, but I'm just going to do it again. I love having a bare bottom reef tank for this reason, and I'm going to mention the other reasons as well in this video, uh, just in case you're, you know, you're kind of on the fence about it. I love being able to come in here with the tube and I can just move some of these uh, frag rocks around, which basically you've seen these little islands of corals that I have on the bottom of the tank. I just get to move them around a little bit, get in there with the tube and suck out all the detritus. Now, the way that I have this set up and way that I have the flow is I can crank this uh, these MP40s up to 100%. I can get the detritus up in the water column on a daily basis, getting that stuff into my filter socks or bypassing the socks and going straight into the skimmer. And with that, there's certain pockets in the reef tank that are pretty predictable where detritus is going to kind of settle. And when I come in here every Sunday, I just go directly to those pockets and or those areas and siphon out the detritus uh, like clockwork. It's very simple. And getting in here and and moving this stuff around and just kind of picking up, you know, like I said, pockets of detritus, not very big, uh, because again, with the additional flow that I get away with, with a bare bottom tank, a lot of that stuff just gets pulled up into the filter socks and I don't really have to see it in the display at all. Now, a couple of the other reasons why I like to have a bare bottom tank, again, just in case you're not convinced to try it at least, is uh, the additional flow. I can go as much flow as I want. Again, there's only four MP40s in here, which isn't a ton, but I could add probably four more and not have a single problem. Now, with the additional flow, because I'm a big fan of growing corals, especially acros, as fast as possible, because I do make a living, this is how I pay my bills, being able to sell these corals. So with that, being able to grow them and let them be as strong as possible and grow as quickly as possible, having that additional flow or having a ton of flow allows that to happen. Not only is it good for getting nutrients around for the corals and keeping them clean, I get to have the additional um, strength of the coral. So basically with all that extra flow, this coral is forced to grow a stronger base. It has to grow thicker branches. It has to be a stronger coral to be able to stay on that rock structure and to be able to, I guess, essentially survive the reef tank or the environment. So I'm growing faster corals, healthier corals, stronger corals all because i can have a bare bottom tank with a ton of flow going all the time e exception at night i do turn it down so my fish can take a break but also i get some pretty strong fish i mean all these fish probably have abs because they're in here working out all the time with all this flow so with that uh the benefits are really good for the reef tank and i'm set on bare bottom yes i have had sand in my tanks before i've grown acropora and done very well in it but 
because again, I do this for a living. This is how I pay my bills. I like to grow them quicker, faster. Or it, that's basically the same thing I said twice in a row. <laughs> Stronger, colorful, or all those good things. And being able to do that with a bare bottom tank is just easier for me. And if it's easy, I'll keep doing it, right? Uh, so with that, detritus removal is extremely easy for me. Um, and again, every single week, get in here, knock out those detritus pockets, get the nutrients out, and continue on. All right, now that I've removed about 30 gallons worth of detritus from the bottom of the main display, you guys can see that the water level is at the point where the MP40s are now starting to suck air and shoot micro bubbles throughout the main display. And this is by design. I like to let my reef tank sit in this micro scrubbing environment for about 15 or 20 minutes, allowing those micro bubbles to attach to the acropora and the detritus within the reef tank, letting those mucous membranes release, come up to the surface, and that stuff will be siphoned off down into the filter socks and then removed from the reef tank in the next day or two. Now with that, do you need to do micro bubble scrubbing? Probably not. Is it a huge a difference or is it making the reef tank better? I don't know. I feel like I do get a better polyp extension on some of my corals a couple days later. So is it true? I don't know. But if I can convince myself that something is true, it probably is, right? Isn't that how it works these days? So with that, micro bubble scrubbing is my preferred method of kind of cleaning my acropora and kind of getting the rest of the detritus up out of the water column and into the filter socks. Now, speaking of filter socks, I do only run them for about 48 hours after a water change. After that, I just don't really like to have them because I get distracted and I don't ever change them. Two days after a water change, I'm like, oh, okay, let me go ahead and get those out. And then I just let the skimmer kind of take care of the rest of it, and uh, I don't really worry about it. Now, with that, I do have freshly mixed salt water, again, 30-gallon barrel next to my low boys, and that has um, instant ocean salt. As you guys know, I stopped using Fritz. I'm not using reef crystals or anything like that. It's just standard instant ocean at 1.026, heated to 79 degrees, and I just dump it into my sump, turn on the return pump a couple times, fill the main display back up, and let everything go back to normal. Now, one thing I do wanna know is if I'm about to do my weekly water change and I test my nitrates and phosphates and I find out they're either uh, really low or just kind of on the verge of, I don't really wanna take a chance of lowering them any more than they should be, then I will skip that weekly water change like I did last week. When I got back from my jujitsu trip, I had my low phosphate, so I didn't do a water change last week, but I am testing my nutrients are back to normal, so I'm debating on if I'm gonna do one this weekend. We'll see where my nitrates and phosphates are at this Friday and I'll go from there. Now, that's pretty much it for my weekly water change. It's uh, relatively easy, as you can see. It's it's really just kind of get in there, get it done as quickly as possible. The only thing that's really time consuming is cleaning that glass, and uh, that's just kind of how it is. Maybe I will invest the money and get a better um, glass cleaner. I do have a few different uh, types, but they just kind of get worn out. The blades go bad over time. So I'll look around, maybe I'll try something new and see if I can get it done a little bit quicker. But outside of that, really easy process and I do enjoy uh, what the reef tank looks like the next day once it is uh, clean and detritus free and I can actually enjoy the fish and coral for at least a few days before the glass starts getting dirty again. So with that, if you guys like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more. Now I am getting back into my routine. If you guys have noticed, I am getting two to three videos up every single week and that is my goal and I'm gonna keep trying to hit that goal at least um, as long as I possibly can. You know, life gets in the way, things happen, but I do enjoy creating content. I really miss creating content like this. So again, two to three videos a week. And if you guys wanna be part of any of those videos, so if you have any questions or you have any topics or anything you guys want me to cover, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section and I will make a video on it, all right? So with that said, again, if you guys wanna support me and what I do here, check out my website, fishofhex.com. Again, 30% off all coral for the month of May, as well as our usual buy three, get one free on all 3D printed items. And I appreciate all the support in advance. So with that being said, I'll see you guys later. Peace.